100% possible, and uh, you know what? It's 110% badass, so like, no one prepared, no one trains to fall down the stairs, right? So, so you don't want to fight two people at once, you want to fight one person twice. Hey guys, my name is John, aka Bruce Lee. I'm a kickboxing teacher, and today I'm reacting on Fast and Furious 6. I'll be rating it out of 10 on realism and out of 10 on entertainment value. And uh, I would average that for a total score. Uh, and let's watch it now. Alright, running through the subway. Oh, you're gonna push around a little. Woo! Jeez, no one gonna help you. This is a. There was people there a second ago. Where'd all the people go? Where's the witnesses? Oh, okay, that was a little weird. Um, so you see here where she's trying to handcuff her. Um, I'm no cop, but I believe what you want to do is you want to pin both arms uh, behind the back or maybe uh, take her down first. She can't move and break free, which is about to do and punch her in the face right now. Because like, no one's going to stand there and just get caught. <laughs> okay. Alright, let's see what this, what this guy does. These are security guards. I think Khan and whatever the other guy's name is. Pops in. Again, no one's going to help. Alright, let's uh, let's break some of that stuff down actually. So um, I like here uh, this monk looking dude. He, he walks in really casual, right? This is uh, actually a neat trick uh, using an actual fighting or actual kickboxing is that uh, you want to look like you're not going to do anything and then you do something. Sounds obvious, but uh, it's a neat little trick there to look as ca uh, as casual as he really is and it goes right into a quick attack. They don't even know what hit him. Very cool. And this sidekick here is actually really, really good form. After my namesake, Bruce Lee. Nice. So let's uh, slow that down uh, quite a bit. Let's play back speed. Let's go a half. Uh, let's break that down really slow here. We got Han and this other guy running over. He's going to push this guy with a jumping elbow. He's going to step in, extend that right leg, and send the guy absolutely flying. That's very realistic. Uh, let's see what else he does. But yeah, I, I feel like he's going to stand up. Yeah, just, why would you stand there and get caught? Get some space. Gets, ooh, gets kicked a little bit. Alright, some uh, kind of, she puts that uh, that cuff around her hand to kind of get like a, a bronze knuckle or brass knuckle, sorry, going. Uh, not a bad idea if you have someone who's uh, obviously really skilled in front of you. I'm still putting up with police guys. Pretty quick work for three guys. Alright. What I like right here actually is that swagger. Very realistic if you, if you have to fight somebody. Uh, looking confident is, is gonna definitely do you some good. So here, he looks ready to go. He looks confident he's gonna win. And when you do the other guys, they look, <laughs> they look pretty scared. I mean, that kind of sets the pace for the whole fight from there on. So I'm assuming this guy's gonna win. Alright. Okay. Try to double team him. Oh, is this Gina? Is that Gina Carano? Oh, that is! Okay, this is for, if, guys, if, you, if those of you don't know, Gina Carano is actually, was a really big name in MMA. Uh, is a very legit mixed martial artist, so I'm expecting big things from this movie. I, I knew they had a big budget, but I didn't know they had her in. I think she's Mandalorian now. Good knees, good clinch. Okay, alright. So, so far pretty good. Uh, what they're doing there is clinching and kneeing. Uh, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold them in place, create space with your hips, and then drive your knee uh, preferably into the ribs or into the body. Uh, one little thing there that I thought uh, what is cool what they're doing, uh, definitely like the knees should look like that, but I think in terms of the clinch where you're grabbing your opponent, it's much better to grab them uh, on the neck uh, instead of the arms. So you have a bit more leverage to really hold them in place. So here would be a bit more steady, uh, but sometimes it's kind of a little bit, you just got, you gotta throw what you gotta throw. Throw, I get it. Cool. Alright. Ooh. Nasty elbow. Inside leg kick. Into an arm bar. Uh, so this jump that she does here, guys, is uh, it's not just for the sake of the movie. Uh, this flying arm bar. Uh, people actually have attempted this in the UFC as well as other things yeah. and other things. And what you're doing there essentially is, um, from the way I understand it, uh, I'm not a jiu-jitsu black belt, but you're kind of throwing yourself 
and taking them with you and you end up in an arm bar position which means um, you're trying to isolate one arm against your four limbs right like no matter how strong their arm is the strength of your both your arms and your legs and the full leverage of your body is going to be stronger than that one arm you know hyper extend uh, to try and break that arm uh, or just cause some serious pain uh, so what she did there that whole flying thing uh, that's not just a stunt but that's absolutely a real move let's see what this monk guy is doing I was pretty actually you know what I, I like this move right here so Han is gonna punch him straight through and the guy swipes like this let's watch that again he's gonna punch him so right here we he parries that punch away it's, it's decently realistic uh, so again let's call the parry the one thing that would have been a little bit better a bit more practical is uh, there's no reason to parry something this far away uh, you know, my teacher always told me to, to defend yourself in the space of a telephone booth. So if you know the punch is coming your way, like why meet it all the way over here? You know it's coming to you. Just wait for it to get really close and like, move it by like six inches. And you want to direct that hand just enough across your body so it can't do any hurt, right? So this whole like why block out here and move it three feet when you can wait like here and move it like six inches, right? And I'm told six inches is all you need. Let's keep watching. All right, got him a little bit of a choke hold. That's a, that's a scary position to be in for sure if you think you might uh, get uh, choked out unconscious or even get killed, right? So uh, Han is clearly panicking there, doesn't know what to do. I see he gets, yeah. If you guys missed that, I think he just gets punched in the face by his friend by accident. <laughs> Superman punch. Good dodges, good slips. So what this guy's doing, uh, I would call him the monk guy. Yeah, that pretty Asian and looks really serious. So the, the whole like dodging like this, dodging like that, that's called slipping punches. Uh, and he's doing it very, very accurately there. Uh, really, really good boxing technique from him. And what he did there where Honda kind of runs into his partner, this is actually smart and strategic uh, in a sense because if you're fighting multiple opponents, um, the best thing you're gonna do is put them uh, into one plane uh, of space, right? So you don't want to fight someone on this side and this side where they can surround you uh, and kind of use their numbers to their advantage. So if you imagine, for example, that movie, uh, like 300, uh, it, is it George Clooney? No, not George Clooney, I'm so sorry. Well, uh, Russell Crowe, no. The, that guy, that guy, Gerard Butler, that, that guy, right? So what they do is uh, the 300 of them, spoiler alert, they lose, but they fight off an army of like 100,000 people because they went to that narrow co uh, corridor, that narrow pass where they can't get surrounded very easily, right? Uh, so by that, you're nullifying the advantage of numbers that the enemy has. So what this guy's going to do, uh, what he should do and is doing correctly, is try to put both of his opponents in the same space, in the same line. So you don't want to fight two people at once. You want to fight one person twice. If that makes sense, all right. So you kind of break up, kind of divvy up the work a little bit. Let's see what he does next. So they're at a scramble. Arm bar is pretty tight. Uh, this is really, really good arm bar. So you see here, she's using her legs to press the body down and her arms to press uh, down the other way and try to hyperextend that elbow. And you can even sometimes uh, snap your forearm in half like this. So it's really, really painful. Let's see what she does to get out of this. Okay, she didn't quite have it, so she reset. And you see, uh, it's, it didn't show it too well on the camera there, but the, the person on the bottom, what she's trying to do is lock her hands together like this. Because no matter what, um, the entire strength of that uh, Gina Carano's body, the person on top doing the arm bar, it's going to be stronger than your arm. But if you can lock your hands together like this, it's not only a measure of strength, it's like a, a seatbelt buckle, right? You're trying to clip it in and keep it tight so they can't hyperextend your arm and do that damage. Uh, let's see if it's going to be enough to get out. Okay, so she slipped out. I think she did. She bite her. Let's back up. I swear. Oh man, so she resets the arm bar. Ah! Oh, that noise she they make too is disgusting. Um, so in a real fight, that's obviously a uh, sorry. In a, I should say in a competitive fight, that's probably not a legal move. You know, like Mike Tyson did it in his match. Uh, definitely not something nice to do, but in a real scrap on the street, you gotta do whatever you can uh, to win that fight, or sometimes it's a measure of survival. So you gotta kick, scream, bite, whatever you gotta do, you, you do it. Alright, so I don't begrudge her for that whatsoever. She wants to get back to her feet. Oh, and rushes her. Ooh! Uh, now all the people in the subway are back. Surprise. 
So, um, you know what? Uh, right here, where she bull rushes her, it kind of seems like uh, she got frustrated and just, you know, just rushed right at her. Um, but that might not, that could be that way, but it might not be necessarily that mindset. And what I mean is, that could have been very, very strategic. So if you're fighting someone, you're punching them, you're kicking them, or in her case, she's doing a little bit of grappling uh, and losing that exchange, it's just, it doesn't make sense. It's illogical to keep doing something that doesn't work, right? She's clearly the superior po opponent in terms of technique. So sometimes what you want to do is make it a scrap, make it dirty. Uh, you want to force into a position or a circumstance that she's not used to. And that bull rush to get her down the stairs, like, no one prepared, no one trains to fall down the stairs, right? So you're kind of taking away some of that technique advantage. Uh, so it's actually, it might not be, you know, a bull rush, but it might be pretty smart, you know? This is just a uh, blind swinging. They roll down, that looks like it hurt. Good blocks. Very Wing Chun style. Let's uh, see what he, he's having. Okay, so he's having some trouble here because he's got he's been hit in the back twice, so he knocks this guy back and has to fight Han now and gets hit in the back again. Uh, he's not really blocking, so that's what I mean when you uh, when you try to get uh, both your opponents in one way, you kind of fight them one at a time. When they start getting around you or behind you, that's when it's really two on one where they have a major advantage. But this guy. Uh, and, and getting hit in the back of the head is, is not pleasant at all. There's a reason that it is illegal uh, in Muay Thai, kickboxing, and boxing, uh, UFC, all that stuff. They don't allow strikes to the back of the head because with an, even not that much impact, uh, what you, you start to see is like you get hit in the back of the head really hard. Um, the way it hits your nerves and your brain, like you sometimes see spots or sometimes your vision disappears for half a second or even a few seconds. It's very scary uh, and it does cause a lot of long-term damage. So you want to avoid getting hit in the back of the head. This guy though is just not even blocking. He's not worried about getting hit in the back of the head. He's just badass. He's just fighting through it, but he doesn't care. So it's, instead of being smart, he's being really, really tough. Uh, and that's a hundred percent possible, and uh, you know what? It's a hundred and ten percent badass. So let's see what he does next. Oh! <laughs> so the sidekick he pulled off at the beginning of the video uh, against that first uh, that first uh, police guy that's still on the ground in front of the sign. He broke the glass with a sidekick. Uh, what he did here was a jumping sidekick, but with both legs extending out. Uh, he, he didn't really need to jump, to be honest with you. I actually find that when you do a jumping kick towards somebody, it might clear the distance, but I don't find it, it provides you too much more of a thrust or too much more power. All you're doing really is uh, looking cool for the sake of the movie. Uh, what I will say is that uh, the only time that this would really make sense to do that kind of a jump kick is if he jump kicks into this guy and kind of like WWE elbows on on the ground and breaks his spine or something like that. And, right there, yeah, there, I guess he does do it. He kind of gets a two, two birds, one stone. All right, this chick's losing. And she runs away. You know what? Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. You know, you're met with a really strong opponent. Uh, you don't wanna fight them one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes you get to, to live and fight another day. Uh, so I, don't, I haven't seen the movie, but I imagine uh, instead of trying to fight one-on-one -on -one where she was losing, uh, maybe one-on-one, -on -one, like there's no chance for you to win, but what if you're a full team uh, is better than their full team, right? Uh, maybe you get the rock in there, like whatever it is, uh, you want to change the landscape or change the circumstances of the fight. Um, and yeah, basically, yeah, just fight another day, all right? So um, that's my thoughts on, uh, on a scale of one to 10 in terms of realism. I'm gonna give that a seven out of 10. Uh, there was some good moves there, uh, absolutely, especially from the, the non-actor actors. What about that is like, the, not the main characters, but Gina Carano and the, the, the monk guy. Uh, they had some really, really good technique, really, really good uh, realistic moves. Obviously, it is a movie, so some of it, uh, they're kind of exaggerating or they're, uh, dra uh, you know, kind of doing more dramatic uh, um, instances to make it more entertaining for you. Uh, pretty good. There's a few things, though, that I thought were incorrect, like, um, Mainly is that, uh, you know, when you're fighting two guys, you want them going one way. You want your hands up blocking. I know you're cocky, but uh, you, you want to be protecting yourself, especially against two guys. And uh, yeah, overall, pretty impressed. Uh, I know Fast and Furious has kind of this, uh, this whole thing about being like ridiculous. Uh, in its, uh, its fight scenes and you know, it's, it's like a meme, right? Their fight scenes and like the plane scenes, the driving scenes, the stunts, it all gets ridiculous. But this, 
this wasn't far off from a pretty realistic scrap, so I'm happily impressed with that. Uh, in terms of entertainment factor, I thought I thought that was funny and really, really cool and just a lot of fun overall. So I give that a 10 out of 10 entertainment factor, an average total score of 8.5 out of 10. I hope you enjoyed this guy or saw some value in it. Uh, please leave a like and subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.